show you guys top of the morning day so the texas chainsaw massacre came out in 1974 and it tells the story of five teenagers going on a road trip but before i get into the movie i just want to give a huge shout out and a big thank you to horror daddy 85 now this guy has an instagram page and he cosplays horror icons and believe it or not it was him in the intro of this video that was him and as you can see he put a lot of detail and a lot of hard work into his costumes and his outfits and the settings so i'm going to put the link in the description below of his instagram page which also has a youtube uh address on it and yeah please if you can go in the link the link in the description which will take you to his instagram page and give him a follow because i think he totally deserves it because he works really hard he has nearly 850 posts of all of his costumes and all different horror icons from michael jason pennywise art the clown you name it he's probably been it so check him out in the description below and once again my friend thank you for the intro fucking loved it so the texas chainsaw massacre is probably one of the most notorious horror movies out there it's celebrated as being one of the most important horror movies in the industry. And I can only imagine what it would have been like back in 1974, going to the theaters, not really knowing what you're going to walk into. I would have loved, you know, the way like modern days, you get those reactions from people go to the cinema and they come out and there's a guy with a microphone. So what did you think of the movie? And they talk about the first impressions. That's what I would have loved if they could have done back then. Because you can only imagine. You know, maybe there is. I know, I've, I've never searched YouTube for that. But let me know in the comments below. <laughs> is there such a thing? But I can only imagine what they would have said. Because what makes it scary, in my opinion is the lack of music. That's one of the things, if you watch this movie and there's a jump scare, it's not like today, you would hear like, dun, then followed by the jump scare. It's just literally something happens and you're like, you know, it takes you back because the music indicates to you that, oh, it's coming, it's coming, wait for it. Ah! But without that music and it happens, you're like, oh shit. You know, and it makes it more unexpected. It makes it more terrifying. And even the story is pretty simple. You know, you get five teenagers going on the road and they pick up a hitchhiker. And instantly you can just tell that this hitchhiker, there's something a little bit off with him. You know, like the way he talks, the way he... He seems to have a like obsession, like with how you kill the cows and boiling the heads, and except for the tongue, of course, <laughs> except for the tongue. And as the conversation goes on for at least what ten minutes less, you know he gets more unhinged and unhinged. And I'm thinking, why haven't you thrown this guy out like a minute after he came into the the minivan? You know, it took for the it took for them or uh, for him to cut one of the the guys, the guy in the wheelchair, Franklin. Oh, we'll get into him cutting him with a knife before they say, "Hey, you know what? Maybe we should get this guy out." <laughs> I don't want him to get blood all over my good fucking windows or the seats. So <laughs> they tore his ass out. And he chases after them doing the whole this fucking face thing he does. And I should just I, I should say also that 
every character in this movie, like teenager, all the, the five teenagers in this movie, are pretty forgettable. I mean, they don't have any, like, dynamic personalities. I mean, you get one, but he's fucking annoying. And <laughs> literally, they're just cannon fodder to show good kills. And the kills are the highlight, of course. But, like, you get Franklin, who's extremely... Oh, he's aggravating. Like, he moans throughout the whole fucking movie. Literally. You don't, think, you don't think that guy's coming back for us, do you? Oh, I lost my knife. <laughs> you, <laughs> he moans. And he repeats, like, you know, you don't think that guy's coming back for us. And he keeps repeating it throughout the whole fucking thing. And then there's parts where you kind of feel sorry for him. Like, you know, the part when he's trying to, <laughs> he's trying to get up the ramp on his own. But he has a, you know, fucking wiener hanging out of his mouth. And he's trying to get in. And part of like, you're like, okay. I feel sorry for this guy. Then when he gets in, he's like, you know, I hope we had a good trip. He does the whole, like, you know, and he keeps doing that over, and then you're like, all right, yeah, no. I could fucking see why they left him. <laughs> Should have tipped his ass over. <laughs> That's me. I'm, I'm sorry. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, fucking hell. So, yet his annoying ass, and apart from him, Nobody else is, is memorable. The only thing memorable about the characters in this movie are the kills. That's literally it. If you think of the characters, you're not going to think of, oh, he was funny because he always had this. Oh, he had a catchphrase. That was this and that. No, it's the kills. That's the, all, the only thing you remember about the character, like Jerry. Oh, yeah, Jerry. Oh, he got, he got hit with a fucking steel mallet and his body was shaking. Yeah, I remember that. that, that, that that's it. <laughs> you know, but... You know, it doesn't make the movie bad. Of course, it doesn't. You know, there it doesn't make the characters bad either. Just forgettable. That's all. So, of course, you get the iconic moment where we first see Leatherface, and again, this scene is scary because there's no music. In fact, there's a lack of music in this movie. There's like the odd eerie background, like droning noise, but it's only the odd time. The, you know, whenever Leatherface comes out with the you know, the fucking mallet. Scary because there is no music. There's no jump scare music. There's no din. There's none of that. It's scary. And that's why I think it's impactful. And that's why it holds up. And I think it gives it that realistic edge, that raw. Like, it's like you're watching a fucking a snuff movie. Like, because there's no music. I mean, the guy, Jerry, gets hit and the body shakes. You know, it's the nerves. But, you know, and it gives the this really icky feeling like, am I actually watching someone get murdered right now? Fuck. You know, <laughs> and it's impactful and it's good. It, there's not many horror movies today that, that do that. I wish they would. This came out in 1974 and it was already ahead of its time. <laughs> you know, ahead of the pack. And then you get like the, the, the girl hung up on the, on the hook, which is pretty iconic. While she watches her boyfriend get fucking mutilated with a chainsaw. <laughs> that's, 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 that's not a good date at all. And then Franklin's kill, I thought, whenever I first, first watched this movie, that's the one that did get me because, you know, the, she's pushing him through the fucking forest and twigs and trees and everything. And suddenly just, it's, it's the chainsaw you hear first. It's like, Dang. but it's the chainsaw. It's not music. It's the chainsaw. And you see this poor bastard getting chopped up in the fucking, in the chair. <laughs> and then Sally stands there screaming for two minutes instead of running. That annoyed me. And, uh, you know, there's, there's really smart things too. Like I didn't pick up on, like, for example, when a hitchhiker was thrown out and he put blood a blood stain on the van, which was basically him marking the van. Like, this is the one to get. You know, that look out for this van. We're going to have these fuckers for dinner. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's really clever. There was a guy at the gas station that turns out to be working with him too. He's part of the family. He's the cook. And even, I should also say, the director of this movie really loved 
those booty shots, didn't he? You know, you know the fucking one. Don't, don't play innocent with me. I know you lot know. You know, the girls are walking, and it's like a guy like right down, <laughs> looking at her ass, walking with the camera. Like, hey, hey, show me that is. You know, you're like, what the fuck? But you know, it was 1974, or uh, you know, so whatever. <laughs> but whatever. It's it's cinematography. You know, it's stylistic. I, if you were called that, I probably not know. <laughs> but um, then you get a really eerie scene as the part whenever Sally. Sally isn't even memorable in my eyes until the last, what, 10, 15, 20 minutes of the movie. Whenever she, it's basically her, all of her friends are dead, her brother's dead. You know, and I also refuse to believe that this movie was supposed to be a comedy. How the fuck's this supposed to be a comedy? <laughs> I mean, I, okay, I can name two intentional comedy scenes. Okay, so when Franklin's taking a piss and the, the big truck goes past and the, the breeze blows him, pushes him down the, down the hill in a wheelchair and he's tumbling. That's funny. No offense. But um, oh, that's funny. And then the scene... I mean, you could call this comedy, but I, I sniggered when I first seen it. But you know, whenever they're getting grandpa, they hit her in the back of the head with a hammer. Well, she's leaning over the bucket, and he kept, he kept, he kept on missing. It's whenever he missed, that's the funny part. Like, uh, you know, that you can kind of count as comedy, but then you, know, it's instantly cancelled the second he hits her in the back of the head and see a drug. Like, <laughs> oh, you know, so. I just don't believe this was intended to be a full comedy, like the director claimed. I just don't see it. Just those little bits. But is that it? I mean, Franklin was supposed to be a comedy character. He wasn't. He was fucking annoying. So you get the last part with Sally, and she's at the dinner table, and just so anxiety-fueled. Like, literally, I know anybody can hear the screams and think, oh, that's quite annoying. It isn't. It genuinely gives anxiety to the viewer, you know, because they have, like, shots, like, close-up shots of her eyeball while she's screaming. And then you're seeing skulls and you're seeing, like, carved-out faces hung on, like, lamps. You know, it's really genuinely anxiety-fueled. And it works. It genuinely works. And then she eventually... Gets the power to break out, run away, and you get that iconic shot where she's running down the the driveway. You know, when you have the hitchhiker guy chasing her, he's like just toying with her, like scratching her back and shit. And then behind him is Leatherface running with the <laughs> with the fucking chainsaw. And then you get this lorry, this big truck that comes, and it runs over the hitchhiker, killing his ass. And this part pissed me off because the truck stops a big truck and the guy jumps out of the truck I get it to inspect did I just hit somebody what the fuck and then he sees this guy running towards him with a chainsaw and a fucking mask on and instead of jumping back into the truck closing the door locking it because we saw like Leatherface was trying to cut his way into the door the steel door it was just doing that it wasn't actually going through it it was just cutting like that. So we had plenty of time to start the truck and drive off. Nope. Just runs off. And we don't fucking see him again till Well, we don't see him again ever. He just disappears. Like he throws a hammer at him at Leatherface and it hits him. Leatherface cuts his leg. That's it. Why didn't you get in the truck and drive off? And Sally, why didn't you just get in the truck with him? It would have been so easy, but nope. It takes for another truck, to, another little car to come, like a truck. And she hops in the back of that and it drives off. And then you get her hysterically laughing, which apparently was actually real. I was actually the actress. Like that reaction because she, they finished the whole movie and apparently it was stressful because like you had like whenever the other girl like walked into the living room, there was bones and carcasses everywhere and like, you know, there was that really cool sofa that had like looked like a skeleton. 
And apparently it was really hard to film because the smell everybody was in production was vomiting literally every corner, <laughs> you know, because it was so sickening. And then the heat on top of that. So, you know, it, it, it would have been a tough progress process program. Whatever the fuck the word is. <laughs> it would have been hard to film. So they filmed, they finished it, and the director took uh, the actress to play Sally for a coffee and a, a drive to get a coffee and says to her, listen, I'm going to need you to do one more scene. And she says, what? And it was that one. It's the end scene. So that her hysterically laughing was her laughing because that's the end of the movie. That's <laughs> job done. Like, fuck. So that was, that was a real reaction. That was relief. For the actors as well as the character. And then you get the iconic shot, Leatherface at the very end, swinging the chainsaw around, which I thought was really cool. Like, it's just, it's iconic. It's like a character trait. You know, they tried to recreate that in the Netflix one that they made recently at the end of it, where he had the chainsaw, but it just, yeah, it was just less talked about that movie, the better. But, I'm going to be reviewing, obviously, this entire franchise. <laughs> so, started here. So, and there's a lot of stinkers in this franchise, but we'll get to them. But yeah, so, overall, I really enjoyed this movie. Now, personally, I don't think it's the most rewatchable movie. Like, it doesn't have the most rewatchable value because of how icky it is. It's like the movie Maniac. You watch it, and after you're done, you feel like you need a shower. You know, it makes you feel, you know, grimy and nasty for watching it. You know, it's the same impact. So I would, like, maybe once a year, you know, maybe, just maybe. <laughs> but, hey, some people, it's all about personal taste. Some people, I'm sure, watch it every month, every couple of months. But, yeah, so if I were to score it, I would give it... Seven and a half out of ten. It's a very important movie. You know, it blew up the horror genre. You know, this came out before Halloween, before Friday the Thirteenth, before you know any of those movies. This came out first, and it inspired a lot of people. So yeah, I would recommend watching it if you haven't already. And yeah, so if you stuck it as far, thank you so much. I appreciate every single one of you. And thank you so much for watching. It means a lot. And as always, don't kill anyone.